week or two ago, I did a video on the accuracy of the Civil War smoothbore at 100 yards. And in the comments, a lot of you were asking what the comparative accuracy of a rifle is at 100 yards. So I thought, why not go shoot that one? So here is the accuracy of a Civil War rifle musket at 100 yards. cartridges just ah. the things I do for my subscribers what is that the things I do for my subscribers did that guy respond to your video at all nope I think I owe him lunch or something because that's my second best video I'm shooting the regulation cartridge as laid out in the 1861 Ordnance Manual. It's a very simple cartridge, and like the historic originals, mine have a .574 sized Burton Minier bullet. In 1862, the Ordnance Department reduce the size of the bullet to 0.574 so it can load easier in the 577 infields, but this meant it wasn't that accurate in the 58 caliber US muskets. To get the .574 bullet to expand into a .58 barrel, the Ordnance Department increased the powder charge from 60 to 65 grains. This didn't help with the accuracy much either. Last round. I don't even know if they're on paper, honestly.
That was a miss. Sent it clear over the top of the target. That's fun. All right. Uh-oh. That doesn't look very good. One, two, three, four, five. And these are, uh, these are probably the other three. So, even though, uh, it's rifled, not particularly better than a smoothbore. If you're keeping score at home, this is the target I shot a couple weeks ago with the smoothbore musket, and I put seven out of the eight shots on the paper there, and the rifle musket, only five. <sighs> Yeah, well, I guess the the rifle musket really isn't uh, as as accurate as I thought it would be at a hundred yards, and the smoothbore is right. At oh, ah, we're a shameful disgrace! And now you Americans will be needing a soldier of the crown to come down here and vindicate the rifle musket and fend off the disreputable YouTube comments. This is better. With a, <laughs> a proper cartridge. Now before you run to the comments to say I can't use a British rifle and ammunition in a Civil War accuracy test, the infield was widely used during the Civil War and the Confederates extensively used imported English ammunition as well as their own version of the infield cartridge. So this is a perfectly valid Civil War cartridge and rifle to use. Yeah, you're good. Almost reverted to bad habits. No flinch. <laughs> Try it again. Wonder why that was. Maybe. I know. It's my favorite time of year. The infield cartridge used a smooth-sided bullet, popularly known as the Pritchett. It was always paper-patched, unlike the U.S. Burton Minier bullet, which was never shot with any paper around it. These are such a pleasure to load. It's like night and day compared to those wretched Burton minis.
Oh, you need to go down? A double. No. Uh -oh. mm. How clean my hands are with infield cartridges. <laughs> much, much more civilized. All right. Uh, I might have. It looks like they're pretty high. I may have sent them over the top of the target. Actually, holy crap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> wow. Um, that's, that's better than I normally shoot from the bench. Good grief. I, uh, I'm kind of at a loss for words, but uh, the croin prevails, and of course that's the the U.S. Uh, Burton Mini. Now, practically, so uh, if, if you're on a battlefield, um, it, it really doesn't matter which rifle you're shooting. Now, the the Burton Mini, you know, these are obviously some uh, some of the minis, so. At 100 yards, yeah, that's that's probably more than about what I would expect at 100 yards. But, uh, yep, the the rifle is very capable <laughs> at 100 yards, uh, some more than others. Hi, I'm Brett, a YouTube pseudo-expert from papercartridges.com. I just want to make a few quick observations about the accuracy of a Civil War rifle at 100 yards. So, first... This is not a test of combat accuracy or effectiveness. Obviously, many factors are present in combat that you don't get on a nice sunny range. So this is only intended to be like a data point for the inherent best case scenario accuracy of the rifle uh, shot standing unsupported with the correct historic ammunition. I consider that very important. Um, I don't shoot from a bench rest because that's not how soldiers shot during the Civil War. And that's really not how these rifles were ever designed or intended to be shot. Uh, Civil War soldiers, for the most part, uh, well into 1863, 1864, they were loading and firing standing. So I just wanted to do this video to see how inherently accurate these rifles are in context using the correct ammunition. And speaking of ammunition, the service cartridge was not an accuracy load by any means. Uh, there's a lot of guys who go shoot these rifles very carefully uh, from the bench rest, and they will work up a target load. And those guys can outshoot me any day of the week in terms of group size. There's no question. Uh, what I shoot is the issued ammunition like the soldiers would have gotten if they were handed a pack of these cartridges back in 1862. And the service ammunition is not as accurate as like the, the modern target bench rest loads that a lot of people shoot. So the U.S. rifle with its .574 bullet, that's got six thousandths of an inch of windage on it. So if you go ask a competition shooter or you go ask someone who shoots with the North-South Skirmish Association, they'll tell you when you're working up a load, you want to get a bullet that's one thousandth, maybe two thousandths of an inch smaller than your bore size max for, for ideal accuracy. So 574 with six thousandths of windage is extreme. Uh, and the, the Model 1861 Springfield, for it's, it's a very good rifle. Uh, unfortunately, by 1862, it was being supplied with bad ammunition. Uh, the United States Ordnance Department, simply for logistical simplicity, uh, wanted to use the same bullet for the 577 Enfields, which were being imported from England, and the 58 US caliber rifle musket. So that meant you had to find a bullet size that worked in both, that you could load easily in both, and that was 574. 
And the plan was eventually to standardize, just switch completely to 58 caliber, uh, the U.S. service caliber. And that simply didn't happen uh, while the war was raging. There were still a lot of infields in use right up until Appomattox. So I am a rifle advocate. Uh, almost all of my videos on this channel, my books, I'm out there arguing that the rifle musket was the first modern infantry weapon. So I'm not a defender of the smoothbore, but I have to be careful not to disparage the smoothbore. In absolute non-combat, you know, uh, shooting range accuracy terms, the smoothbore is still very, very capable inherently when you put it up against uh, the rifle with the period ammunition. Beyond 150 yards, there's no question that it, the smoothbore definitely loses out to the rifle. Uh, even the 5.74 caliber bullets used in, in these, uh, are, they're still stabilized, they're still spinning, they're still far more effective the farther away you get. But inside 150 yards, where Civil War battles were fought for the most part, the smoothbore is still putting rounds on target. You put the target I shot with this next to the target I shot with the smoothbore, and there's not a whole lot of difference. I wouldn't want to be <laughs> standing down range from either one of them. Um, but shooting them is fun. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I will see you next time.